Okay, so uh, so I think just a little review, right? Um, so this is how a multi-dimensional array can look like. Lah. So if you recall, multi-dimensional arrays are they are just traditional arrays, but they are somewhat more specific in the way that the number of rows and columns are more organized. Like if you see like 1D array is the array that we have been learning about. Or 2D array, it's very consistent on the number of rows and columns, 3D array as so. So I think in real life, uh, I think an example is when uh, people actually uh, stand in line when people stand in line um, the top one is actually a 1d array where there's like an order from 0 to 5 in this case and this bottom one is a 2d array where you can uh, find people uh, you can find people based on the num on their row and the column they are in so say if you want to find this person this person would be I think uh, on like uh, if you wanna say like find this person over here, I think this is a uh, row two, row row two column. Yeah, row two column two. Yeah, I did the indexing correct. I don't think so. Yeah, something like that. Uh, um. Uh, for 3D array, I, do, uh, I think it's a bit stupid if we can think of like this being stuck on top of each other. So we use, uh, I think this is a good example of a 3D array, which has been mentioned in class before, where usually in a picture they have, uh, uh, you know, there's an array of pixels, right? There are pixels in the rows and the columns, and then each pixel can be split into three different channels the red the green and the blue and actually this is very important understanding this is very important say if, if you want to do uh, computer vision or machine learning problems that uh, tackles with pictures because um, computers we cannot see an image computers can only see the value of these rgb ch channels so um, this is how we actually represent a 2D matrix, right? Um, so this is the first way to represent it. So if we want to represent it as a matrix row call, uh, first we create the rows first. And inside each row is another list. It's a 1D list where the 1D list serves as the columns here. So, okay, this is the first representation. You can pay attention that uh, you create, a, you first create the list outside, right? And those serves as the rows. And then inside each list is a column. Now, another method of representation is uh, call row. So you create the columns first, and then inside each column is you create each row. Uh, I hope. I know this is not the box pointer diagram that we have been using on, but then this is just a visual representation of how a table looks like. So this one, the outside, uh, cap, the columns encapsulate the rows inside. Okay, so say I want to access column zero, row one, so I'll go to this box, and then I go to this box in particular. So the question is, which one to use? The first representation when we row call or call row, or the second representation call row. So the, the answer is actually it's up to you. Um, it really is up to you. Uh, most people will actually use the first one, row call, because it's more intuitive. You know, you go row first and then column. But then like the actual answer is just like, as long as you can keep it consistent, that you choose row call all the time for all your matrices, then it should be fine. In fact, you don't really have to worry about what's inside the matrix, as long as you can be consistent. That, oh yeah, I want to use row first and then column. I think it's fine. So um, to access a list, uh, uh, this very easy way is actually to use a nested loop. Okay, 
So in this case, I'm iterating through. Uh, I'm iterating through the. I mean, it's up to you, lah. Like, what is your x and what is your y? If your x is a row and y is your column, then just replace it as accordingly. So the way this uh, uh, loop for, loop works is it goes uh, x zero, right, and then it goes to the y. It traces it one by one. Right, it traces it one by one. Once it's done, it will shift to the next x. Okay. All right. So that's a quick refresher on two D matrices. Do we have any questions? Okay. If they, we have no questions, I'll move forward. So we'll now go into the our tutorial questions on the matrix. On the matrix. I hope you guys have downloaded the tutorial questions and reviewed them beforehand because if you don't, uh, you guys are gonna have a hard time actually following up. So again, uh, we, are, we, we represent a matrix by a list of lists. You can assume our matrix, uh, our entries are integers, although it's not really necessary. Lah. We can use functions that are provided in lecture. So I just followed up. I see like the I, you lecture has provided you with functions as such as identity matrix, M type create create zero matrix, create random matrix, uh, and then some matrix matrices. Oh, we can use those uh functions as a ref. I hope you guys open the file from lecture and the arrays as a point of reference for doing this assignment. So the first task is transposing. Write a function transpose M to transpose R and RC matrix to a CR matrix. So when we do, we have this matrix, we are going to convert it to this. Okay. So I think uh, with this, right, um, we'll try to see, I know it's sometimes not easy to understand how to transpose. So some, uh, let's go see what we have. Lah. So according to Biki how we start with any matrix, right? We can transpose any matrix. Say we start with matrix A. Right. Oops. Start with matrix A. And then what well, the first thing that we need to do is turn the first row of matrix into the first column of its transpose. We write row, we write row one of the matrix as a column. This is the first thing that you need to do. And then the next thing is that you need to repeat for the remaining rows, meaning that the initial row should be the column. And the same goes for the non-square matrix. Okay. Okay, so in this case, if it's an MN matrix, then the transpose will be an NM matrix. And then uh, for each element x, y, and it will be, the matrix B T has an equal element of at B Y X. So I think with this we can actually divide some uh, code here. Pardon, um, opening my Python console. <laughs> Okay, so uh, remember initially that uh, we have a matrix, say, wait, what's the function? Okay, def transpose. Uh, I hope you guys can see, it's a bit small. So we have our matrix here. Now we, we start with any matrix, and then like what we want to do is iterate through the matrix one by one. So I think we have, uh, we need to iterate through the rows and columns, but then through, to iterate through the rows and columns, we kind of need to figure out 
what's the what's the range what's the index that we need to iterate through so uh, uh, we need to figure out the row length and in this case since the matrix representation here is row matrix rep representation is matrix row call so we know that um, the length of the actual matrix is the wait wait let me see remember first So this is our matrix representation. So if you want to know the length of the row, it's going to be the length of the entire matrix here. And if you, sorry, sorry. If we want to know the length of the row, we should go inside. Eh? Ah, never mind lah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me check first. I'm tripping myself over here. Okay, the length of the row is here. We want to check the length of the row. And then the length of column is here. I know it's a bit counterintuitive, but yeah. Okay. So rank of row is length, the length of the matrix itself. And the length of the column is the length of any item inside the matrix inside the matrix. So let's say take zero. So we're gonna iterate first. So now we have uh, an iterator here for row, for call, and print, uh, matrix. Okay. So we have successfully created um, a function here that actually iterates through the matrix one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, Every time we iterate through the value, now we want to shift it, right? We want to we wanna turn the first row of the matrix into the uh, first column of its transpose. So uh, now we are iterating to the first column. Uh, and the mathematical formula is here. So if it's, oops, uh, actually this is not right, bro. Uh, if it's if it's in the original matrix, it's in the X row and Y column, meaning it, I think I'll standardize this uh, X, Y. It means that in the new matrix, in the new matrix, it's gonna be in, at position Y, X. And so we're gonna just write Y X. So we can see that the the item at position X Y in the original matrix will have a new place at the new matrix at position Y X. We kept on doing that until the end. Then simply return the new matrix. Now, if you can see, there's a problem. The new matrix is being ref referenced before it. So, uh, you know, like we're trying to access a variable new matrix, but this does not exist. Meaning that whenever we deal with uh, questions like this, uh, 2D matrix, and we need to generate a, a new matrix, sometimes what we want to do is actually to create a new variable, uh, new matrix. And in this case, we can reuse the function that the prof has given us, which is... Uh, Create, uh, where is it? 
create zero matrix. Right. Now create zero matrix. Uh, can do that. The create zero matrix is you need to enter the the length of the row and the length of the column. But then if you do this right, what? Uh, this only works if the size of the matrix is the same lah. So that the new matrix is the same. And is if you oops. If you notice here, right, uh, when the shape is irregular, right, the, le the length of the row and the length of the column is swapped in transpose. So what we want to do here is actually we swap it as well. So that the shape is the shape is swapped. And we actually have our final function on transpose. Are there any uh okay so yeah basically we use this um wiki how page to actually come up with our transpose function lah because we don't really understand right how to transpose so we're trying to convert the words here in, into uh code um okay maybe it can be quite confusing but so are there any questions If there are no questions, maybe give a thumbs up. The rest, are you guys good? Or do you guys have any questions? Okay. I'm glad that you guys uh, are okay. So yeah, try to understand uh, how to transform some matrix and convert it to code. Uh. Generally, when we deal with matrices, uh, what we want to do is we want to get the length of the row and the length of the column. And then we want to create a new new empty matrix for our calculate for it to store our ca new calculations. So it's like a new paper sheet, uh, your, a new paper uh, to actually write down your answers. And then you want to iterate through the rows and columns. Uh. And then in here, we do the calculation. So I think, again, uh, if you guys want to have a rough idea on how we go through the iteration, basically we go like this. Uh. We, it visually, it looks like this where we go it one by one. Yeah, I don't create the animation for the entire square. Lah. Um, Evan? Yeah? Uh, may I know what's the purpose of the last line, new matrix yx equal to matrix xy? Oh, okay. Um, where is it? This particular one, right? Okay. Um, remember, like, transpose, right? Transpose is, like, I need to um, shift. I, I need to, like, move the values from my first row, but I move them to my columns. And that one, right, is can be mathematically defined as like this. Uh, for each element, P, X, Y, X column, Y column, in B, the matrix B, T has an equal element at B, Y, X. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the math formula, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to shift the values at x, y to y, x, but then I don't shift it in the matrix itself because we, you know, if you start changing the value in the original matrix, it can be very messy. So instead, I'm just like gonna shift that to a new matrix here. Y, a new matrix. Yep. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, so basically this is the code as well. Okay. Um, there's a challenge. Uh, you can try to create a one-line list comprehension code. 
but not gonna lie I, I also don't know how to do it okay I think there's a way so like you kind of iterate Like you can change this part, like these three lines into a list comprehension code, but I'm not that smart as well. So I'm not, I cannot do it. Lah. But if you feel like mm, this one is too easy, challenging yourself, try to come up with the one list comprehension code. If you can do this, then your life is going to be easier. Okay, next up, we have this. Given two matrices, A and B, Compute the multiplication of matrix C, where the value of matrix C is this. Okay. So I think this one is a bit uh, tricky. Um, can I have a rough idea? Like, um, yeah, I forgot what. Um, I know you can do reactions, but somehow reactions doesn't show up on my console. Anyways, can you like maybe like give a thumbs up if you know how to multiply two matrices and give a clap if you clap if you don't know how to multiply two matrices. And you go to reactions if you don't know. If you know how to multiply two matrices, give a thumbs up. If you don't know, uh, just clap. The one that looks like, uh, you know, just like two hands touching each other or praying. Okay, I think we have a 50-50 here. So, okay, uh, I think I'll explain. So, in this case, uh, we want to calculate the value of each, uh, the value of uh, each item right here. C11 is defined as this function. So, I think let's just uh, break it down. Where's my pen? So, um, say we have a uh, three, um, can okay, I remember? Say we have a two times three times three times two. Wait, I forgot. Sorry guys, I, I you know like I hate matrices, okay? I hate my linear algebra. I hate linear algebra so much. Anyways, let's just do this. Uh. Like I know like this is a uh, two, this is three, a one one, a one two, a one three, a two one, a two two, a two three. And then this is our second matrix. B11, B12, B21, B22, B2, B31, B32. Okay? Okay? So I don't know what this matrix is. I think this is a 2 times 3, 3 times 2. I always got them swap around. So the first rule of um, matrix multiplication is that the dimension should be the same. Like, if you see right, this is an m times n multiplication, while this is an n times p multiplication, a n times p matrix. Hence, uh, these two must be the same. Okay, so the length of rows of A should be the same as the length row length of calls in B. If they're different, then it's quite problematic. Yeah, we cannot calculate the multiplication here. So this will be an if else statement here. So if this condition is not fulfilled, then we will not uh, proceed. We will not calculate as it is impossible. But say it has been met. So in this case, you can see that there's two rows and this is two columns. Means we can multiply it. Then we'll proceed with multiply, multiplying it. For, uh, okay, the result of the multiplication, as you can see here, is an MP matrix. So we'll just create that matrix first, MP. Okay, 
So now we have that this matrix. Now what's the question is, what's the value of C11? The value of C11 is equal to just look visually la, it's easier. C11, right, this particular matrix, right, meaning that we see uh, we take row of A1 and column of B1. Okay, row of A1 and column of B1 and then we multiply them one by one each pairwise the value and then after we multiply it one by one then we sum them up so if it's c2 if it's c12 over here meaning that we will take row one of matrix a and a wait 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 sorry 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 my bad um c12 should be this one Sorry, sorry, A1 means taking the first column, my bad. Taking the first column and then the second row of B. Sorry, sorry. So this is a column of A. Call of A and row of B. Okay. So if it's C1, 3, it will take uh, column 1 and row 3 of B. Uh, I apologize for the confusion. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm not really good at matrices as well. I really hate matrices. So that's what got, what's going to happen. Uh. Um, in a way, what we want to do right, is actually for each uh, value here, we want to iterate through one by one and calculate it as per the formula. Okay. So let's try. Okay, uh, Matt Mal. Def Matt Mal. Again, as we as usual, we want to figure out the length of the rows usually. But since there are two matrices, like let's do uh row A call A Let's try to find it. Okay, now we create our if else statement first. Remember, um, Uh, okay, where is it? Okay. Remember, right, if uh, the dimensions are not right, if the number of, uh, call the number of rows in A is not equal to the number of columns in B, then it's going to be wrong. Lah. So if, uh, row A is not equal to the length of call B with the uh, print cannot multiply le. and simply maybe like return false so it's a bit unnecessary else we will can continue so I think here what we want to do is create the empty matrix first the find the answer matrix which is create zero matrix 
Now, as we remember, right, the zero matrix, right, the result is, in this case, it's MP, right, MP. M is the number of uh, rows, the number of rows, while in B is the number of columns. P is the number of columns. So we're going to do that. Row A, call B. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, uh, for the first check is supposed to be column A. It should be column A and row B. Sorry, I got it swapped around. Why it's, why it's messing my head. Now it's time to iterate for. Um, in this case, we'll just follow the variables here, which is um, I and J, right? C, I, J. Yeah, I hope you guys can understand what I'm writing here. This one, right, see, this particular loop tries to iterate through the values of the answer box. So in this case, I'm iterating through the matrices one by one. Okay? Now, the question is, what is the value of the matrix of the matrix answer at position C, I, position I, J? Remember, we have this particular formula over here. We have our form formula over here where we iterate through uh, the value of i, j at n. So, remember n, okay. So, we have n right here. n is a constant and n is actually the number of columns in A. So, n should be number of calls in A, which, which happens to be the same as the number of rows in B. For I, A for P, for K in range N, so we follow this particular formula here. K and and then this keeps on changing. Uh, we've multiplied from our first matrix M1. From M1, we take I and K. I, K. Right, and then we multiply it by M2 at K, J. Okay, now we have the term here. The next part is we need to sum them up. As usual, we can. So we have answer I J. You will add them with this term. Oops, this one is actually. Okay, so now we are finished iterating this. Now, after finish, now, uh, now for each box, I'm gonna calculate the value. Now, once I'm done with calculating my value, I simply easily return the answer matrix. Okay. Uh, okay, are there any questions? It's a bit tough, I know. Uh, are there any questions? Again, as I say uh, here, what I do is I create a zero matrix. Uh, I try to figure out the rows and columns for each, for matrix A and B, right? And then after that, I check whether they are multipliable or not. If I cannot multiply, I'm going to exit. If not, we are going to move forward. Now here, I'm trying to figure out the value of N. So in this case, right, actually like, um, like the value of um, M is actually row A, row A. And then the value of P here is actually 
call B. Trying to make it nice. Okay. So we try after that we're trying to figure out the figures that is needed for our calculating our multiplied matrix and then like we created the zero matrix, we look through the zero matrix one by one. And then we initialize the value, which technically is not really needed because of the create zero matrix function. And then like I iterate it. And this particular part over here actually calculates the sigma over here, calculates the sum. So it tries to calculate the value of Cij, in which Cij is the sigma of a, I, K, B, K, J. The I and J comes from the I, J in the first iteration, so I will use that value. But then we need another parameter to look through, which is K in this case, which in which K will iterate through until N. And the value of N is actually equal to this N, which is rho A, A no, which is actually equal to the length of the column A. So we're just gonna create a k in range of n. Now. This one is also uh, can be represented as a list comprehension. Which you can do with something like for this for k in k. This also works. Okay, are there any question? If there are no questions, maybe give a thumbs up. If you guys need more time to understand the code, maybe give a clap. I'm gonna leave that for like 10 seconds for you guys to just have a look and understand what's going on. 10 to 20 seconds. If you have any questions, ask, okay? Because if you don't ask, I don't know what to explain. Are you like initializing a zero matrix or? Uh, sorry, Sam, can you repeat? Uh, you were breaking. Your voice sorry. is breaking. Sorry, okay. Um, for the line that says answer ij equals zero, that one, uh, is uh, is it initializing a zero matrix or is it like... Basically, um, okay, um, this creates zero matrix, right? This creates zero matrix. Technically, I don't know what is the content of the zero matrix, right? Uh, I don't know the content. So to be safe, I'll just like uh, at this uh, at this particular at this matrix right I'll just uh, fill it with zero the value of zero so that I know when my uh, you know my uh, math my what is it, my for loop starts and I sum add them up with an integer I know for a matter of fact that because this is zero right I can add zero with an integer making it safe okay I see thank you Oh, I think you, you kind of need to get a new earphone, Sam. Yeah, I check on that. <laughs> yeah, something like this. Okay. Any other questions before I move on? There's quite a lot to cover today, so I need, I'll just move on for now. There's a lot to cover. Okay, so um, this one is e. Uh, okay, this one is actually the multiplication matrix. Uh, sorry, this one. Uh, ta ta task three is uh, creating a minor matrix. So basically, um, given write a function with a uh, minor matrix to find the minor matrix of M without row I, so like this, and without column G. So if you can see, it's just removed. So this is just uh, like a minor, this minor matrix is uh, not really a formal math definition. Uh, the reason is uh, we want to 
use it in our next question, which I'm going to show you guys, uh, which is uh, determinants. So um, the value of a determinant can be figured in this way. So in this case, if you can see A, the determinant of A, right, is equals to like, uh, you take one row, you take the elements of the first row, and then you can find the determinants of all its minor matrices. Meaning that, say, if I take, in this case, like, I take the first row as a, ref, uh, have a, a point of reference, and then I basically, for each item in that row, I'm going to multiply it with the determinant of the minor matrix, and the minor matrix is generated from uh, the matrix without the row and the column of that particular object, if that makes sense. Okay? Try to understand first. Try to understand. Okay, I'm gonna skip it there for five seconds. Again, I take A and then I remove everything that is adjacent to A, minor matrix, B, and C. And then I multiply it with the minor matrices. Okay. Alright, um, before we go there, I think we'll just go this minor matrix. Okay. Um, the this one is you guys can try it yourself. Um, but due to time, I'm just gonna show you the answer lah, because this one is just gonna help us for the next one. This one is a rather helper function. So this is how you come up with the minor matrix. Uh, remember string slicing. So basically, you take every single row except uh, that particular row. And then you can, for those rows, uh, you eliminate the, you eliminate the column J. La. You can use uh, list comprehension as well for this, but then generally, this is the way you come up with the minor matrix. You just want to remove, right? In this case, it's a bit different because we don't do calculations. We just want to remove things up. So we'll do this. We'll use this instead. Lah. Okay. So for determinant, this is the challenge. Now, the question is, if the minor matrix is not a 2 times 2, then basically you do a recursion. Okay. Mm. So this is the formula. So um, A, B, C, right? And then like uh, basically A, if the determinant is a 2 times 2, right? The determinant is basically this times this minus this times this. If it's a 2 times 2 matrix. If it's bigger than that, then this is the formula. So I think we can try to code that first. We can assume here that the matrix is an n times n matrix for our code. So we can try to check if the length of the matrix is equal to 2. And we can simply relax by return. Minus matrix. If you don't understand, it's okay because this one requires your understanding of matrix matrices. This is basically this is the formula lah. You gotta trust it. So if none of matrix is one, you can just return the value directly lah. 
but I don't think there's any test case for that. Else, if it's bigger, if it's bigger, then what we want to do is uh, we don't need the else statement anymore because we know if it's not one or two, then this part is going to be executed. So this one, we know if it's not one, is it not two, it means it's three or bigger. Then we want to iterate through the rows one by one. Okay. Uh, first standard, we get the length of the matrix. Because we're not actually calculating a new matrix here, so we don't really need to create an answer matrix. Just iterate for row. Okay. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. So now, oh uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, so now what we want to do is actually we want to iterate through the first row, right? We want to iterate through the first row and actually create the minor matrices here, right? So in this case, we know that the row, the value of row is definitely going to be zero at index zero, but then the, the columns, right, actually are changing. So we, we just need to iterate through the calls. For y in call, in range call, we have an answer here zero. And the answer, you add the answer with uh, the values one by one here. Each, each part in this case is A. So A, the value of A can be obtained by, uh, it's a row zero and column of Y multiplied by this thing, a uh, the determinant of the new matrix, which is a minor matrix. You remove row zero and column Y. And then here, if you notice right, like the negative sign alternates. Now to create it alternate, uh, there's a nice trick, basically. Um, basically, we uh, basically just follow lah. Uh, um, Uh, minus one to the power. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I'm trying to break this down to you. So this is our formula earlier, right? Uh, matrix zero Y, taking the item over here, and then uh, multiplied by the determinant of this by removing the first row and column Y. All right, because the row is all, all constant, you just need to remove the column one by one. And then like this part over here, right, is actually, um, <clears throat> this part over here will actually determine the sign of the, at, whether it's plus or minus. La. If you can see, it's alternating here. So if you can see here, if Y is zero, y is zero, then basically it's minus one to the power of zero, which which is one lah. If y is one, then minus one to the power of one is minus one. If y is two, then minus one to the power of two is one. Because minus one times minus one is one. So 
I think this one is a quite neat trick to actually know that if you want to do like an alternating plus minus plus minus, you definitely want to do like minus one to the power of something, to the power of y in this case, to the array, depending on your alternate. And this one is like basically the formula, lah. okay? Basically, uh, this is the base case of the recursion. Basically, if it's already like the, the matrix is a two times two matrix, this is the formula. This one is you don't really need to know because that's the formula. Lah. So yeah, that's uh, calculating determinants. Lah. Once you're done, it's a pre-written answer. So in this case, uh, you can you kind of can do like a list comprehension if you're feeling very, very uh, fancy. And you return the sum. Or y in range com. And just put chuck this in. Chuck the entire list comprehension there. Okay, um, I know there must be a lot of questions by now. So yeah, are there any questions? If there are no questions, maybe like give a thumbs up. Oh, you guys are still trying to figure it out. It's okay. It'll take your time. Okay. Again, uh, to show you guys, this is the original formula. And so with this, right, uh, we can do any matrices of any size because it will just keep on recursing. Lah. Say, it's a, say it's a 4 times 4 matrix, it's going to be, say it's a 4 times 4 matrix. It's going to be uh, A of F G H G K L N O P minus B of E I M G H K L O P plus C of E F G S R E F H I J L M N P minus D E F G I J K M and O. Okay. And then like each part of this, you kind of find the determinant again, recurse, recurse, and you find the value. Okay. So yeah, that's generally how you want to approach the question. Lah. In this case, again, we try to calculate the length of the rows and columns, but in this case, it's a very special one where we kind of know that you just need to take the element of the first row so we can we don't need to iterate through the rows one by one. We just can ref, iterate through the row here, uh, columns. So we just iterate through the columns and create the calculations as needed. So in this case, what you kind of need, but you kind of need to solve, to know right to solve the matrices problem is actually a good understanding of reading mathematical formulas. So all those devil letters, all those letters sent by devil the devil to math formulas, you kind of need to be able to understand that. Lah. Okay, if there are no questions, I'll move forward. Uh, if you guys have any question, if you guys are too afraid to ask questions, you guys can always ask me in the chat. The chat has been pretty empty. Um, so, hello? Yes, hi. Uh, can you go through the minor matrix again? The 
course, I didn't catch anything for the minor metrics part. Oh, okay. Alright, cool. Okay, minor matrix is actually pretty simple. My minor matrix, remember, like our goal is actually to remove. We have this particular matrix, but then we want to remove uh, the rows and the columns, right? So in this case, what happens here is that we first remove the row because that's the easiest one because the row is like just outside. So we can just like create a string slicing. We can create a, a no, sorry, not string slicing, a list slicing that just takes in this. Okay, that's a bad color. We can create a slicing that just takes in this part and this part and combine them together. Right. Now, after we have created that particular string, uh, slice of string, right? Say we have four, three, two. Yes, pardon my ugly handwriting. Okay, okay, okay. This is already pretty bad. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Okay, so we we have removed the first part, right? We have removed the first part, and if you can pay attention, this is our new parts over here. What we want to do is we actually remove this particular row. So we kind of need to iterate it through one by one. This row, this row, this row, this row, this row. And in each row, we're going to remove uh, the, the red column here by doing another slice, list slicing for each row. Meaning that if we need to do it per row, we kind of know that we kind of need to do a for loop here. But after you take those parts, you combine them together. Uh, but hence, we remove the column. The code is here. This part, uh, this part over here, slice the rows. And this part over here, slice the column, uh, slice it, but uh, remove the columns. For each row. Okay. Uh, do, take it slow, Rehan. If you're good to go, then uh, just let me know. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right, so that's the end of matrices. Now we're going to the next problem, which is much more fun. Oh, before that, uh, uh, I think if you guys need additional practice, you guys can take this screenshot. Lah. So you remember this question right from PE where you calculate areas, you have a list of width and you have a list of height and you need to calculate the areas of the white, yellow or red boxes. Now try to calculate the area matrix where it returns the value, the return value is a 2D matrix of the areas of each box. So you get, so it's a 2, 2D matrix where we get the value of the area in the, of each particular box. Okay, if you can do that, then I think you guys should be fine. Okay, um, do it in your free time uh, and I'm just gonna send this in the Telegram group because this is not in the actual this is not in the actual tutorial uh, slides. Okay. Next part is the maze. Uh, so we have this particular maze here where zero, empty, zero is empty, block is one. So um, I think uh, create random maze has been provided for you. Right. Um, uh, 
create random maze has been provided by you, so you just need to create a, eh, have it been provided or not? I kind of forgot. Anyways. So we have a maze, and this is the definition of the maze, and in this case, like, you guys can, uh, can like, you know, try to go through it one by one, like, eh? Like, I try to travel, travel, find my way. Yeah, I think I can find my way. Oops, actually, that's a roadblock. Uh, I need to find another way. Actually, it's a roadblock, eh? Cannot go anywhere because of this wall. Hey, actually, there's a way here. Sorry. And yeah, I finally arrived at at stops, stop point. Okay. This is my start. This is my stop, and in this way, I somehow can travel. So the question is, uh, okay, first is you. Create a function, create random maze to generate such a maze. Uh, which um, I think you guys can do it, right? It's just like create a zero matrix and then uh, basically just initialize the value. I'm just gonna copy paste a uh, code from lecture. So, um, this one is a quote from lecture. Um, I'm just going to modify it a bit. So, instead of random matrix, I'm going to create a random maze. And instead of 0 to 9, it's going to be 0 to 1. Okay. Okay, okay. If the difference is here. Um, any questions so far? I think create random maze should you guys should be okay. Right. Right. Okay. I hope I'm not talking to a wall. The next question is actually trickier. So a maze is solvable if we can go from zero, zero to n minus one to n minus one. So in this case we have a path like this. Right. And the maze is not solvable if there's basically a wall uh, like this. If there's a wall, then we cannot do it. Okay? But then we can reach all the zero spaces. Uh. So the question is from zero, zero, uh, how do we know that a maze is solvable or not? Can anyone? Okay. So, um, the, how do we know that a maze is solvable or not? Um, write your ideas in the chat. How do you know whether a cell maze is solvable or not? Given that we have a matrix like this, right? We have a matrix. Oh, a bit. We have a matrix like this. How do we know that it is solvable or not? Remember the data structure, da da da. Any ideas? And even any stupid ideas. If you don't know, just say don't know. It can get the zero on the last column. Okay, see, this is zero, but then suddenly, like, uh, right here at, at this particular. Yeah, can I change my pen color? I cannot change my ink color, okay. But suddenly, like, at this particular point, right, suddenly, like, this, there's a one here. So it's blocked. How do you know whether it's connected or not?
any other ideas? Just go crazy with the ideas, like how? Okay, so yeah, if like it's if it's a one, then go, you go up either up or down. Okay, um, I still don't see how it solves the problem. Any other ideas? Friends, any other ideas? I. Uh, Aaron. Yes. So, at zero zero, right? Mm hmm. So, like after that, we can like check whether, like because we have, uh, the coordinate mm -hmm. of the zero in the matrix, right? we can something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's, I think, another answer. Like, okay, thanks, Damon. Yeah, yeah, basically, you guys can, you, you kind of can travel. Okay, so there's also another, so, okay, I think that there's another way, la. like, it's actually very easy, lah, guys. Like, uh, you know, imagine like you guys are in U Town and you don't know where Tembusu is. What do you guys do, ah? Uh? You guys, if you guys are so shy, afraid of asking people, what do you guys do? Right? You guys just guys just walk around, see where Tembusu is, just like search around, and that's what we're gonna do today, lah. That what we're gonna do today is basically we're just gonna anyhow go. <laughs> Okay, so the logic is uh, we want to just like go around and search, just search all the places possible to go. So when you're at a certain position, you want to see whether you can go to your neighbor or not. Lah. So in this case, if you are in position IJ, where are the positions that you go, can go? Right, you can go uh, north, south, east, west. Um, but then, in this case, right, you cannot really go north, right? Because uh, if you can, if you go north, right, there's actually a damn it. There's a one here. You cannot also go beyond the box because you know in this world, in this particular world, the Earth is flat. Kind of, it's kind of trial and error. In this particular world, the earth is flat, and if you actually walk beyond the borders, you fall off to the edge of the earth. So, for that, you guys just like try to, um, um, you try to come up with a rule that, uh, that if it's blocked or out of bounds, then you cannot go there. Okay. So whether it's the rules are either like maze A B is one, or it is the it uh, the index right, the position your coordinate is actually out of bounds, meaning that it's you know it's to the left, to the right, to the top or to the bottom. Okay. So in this case, uh, you kind of want to crap come up with a function of possible neighbors to return a list of neighbor coordinates such they are possible. So in this case, if you write I2J29, right, the possible neighbors are only like 129 or 329. Uh, generally, try... Okay, so there's a question. If you use try accept, which is... Uh, uh, Python function that has not been taught yet. Try except is it possible? Because um, it is possible, but it's kind of frowned upon. Because like um, it's not good lah. In 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 next error is we try to avoid errors and 
Besides, like, even with try accepts, right, sometimes we want, in try accepts, we want to specify the types of error that we encounter, the exception, in practice, like, we want to try to catch what type of error, so we can actually understand how our code works. That's why we create this if-else statement, so we kind of understand, like, oh, we cannot go beyond the borders. It is possible, but then it's kind of frowned upon. Okay, so this is our function for possible neighbors. Basically, we come up with all the different candidates and we check for each candidate if they are they fulfill our requirements. Right, we have four candidates. If we check for C in our candidates for each candidate, we check whether they are the co the coordinates are valid. And if their coordinates are valid, is there uh are they blocked or not? If they're not blocked, then we return we app append it to the output and we return output. Okay, then after that, what's gonna now you can you know that if you're at position zero, you know the places that you can go. What's next? You need to walk around, right? So if you just like go around, right? Um, yeah, with some luck, you can go to the exit. But what if the maze is not solvable, right? If there's a limit in the number of steps, is if you limit the number of steps, it's gonna be difficult. This is the problem. So this is one of the types where you kind of want to use a while loop because uh, you kind of not know when you'll reach the end or not. And for this, can you use like stack and queue, then? Whenever you meet the next neighbor, you... I, I, I was about to go there. In fact, there's no stack and queues actually in Python. So you kind of can emulate a stack or queue. Okay. So I think I'm... Okay. La, um, I'm just... Um, I'm going to introduce you to a second algorithm. But the second algorithm is I collect all, all the possible neighbors in a collection S and I go try them. When I go to a new place with new neighbors, I keep adding neighbors to S, except that if some of the neighbors are visited before, uh, I'll need to keep track of them visited. If you guys don't understand, I have prepared a wonderful slides for y'all. So this algorithm too is called the flooding algorithm. And I think for some of you have kind of figured out what flooding algorithm is, such as uh, what Bingson just mentioned. So uh, for flooding algorithm, I'm gonna um, introduce you uh, so my little trip to Bali, I know in the COVID time, in times of COVID, sometimes it can be long for traveling. So I'll take you there to Bali. Um, yeah, I love going to Bali so much. Just, you know, I want to break the ice a bit, uh, guys. We don't, we should not talk about coding all the time. So uh, earlier this year, I went to Bali with my family. This, this is a picture with me of my sister. The top one is at uh, the Jimbaran beach where we eat uh, grilled seafood. Bottom is uh, at the Kuta Beach, and Bali is just a wonderful place to go, and I love to go there every year. So, um, remember earlier we have a maze, right? So, in this case, we also have a map. So, in this case, we have a point, right? We From Singapore, we just landed at the Murahrai International Airport at Denpasar. So, our current location is at Denpasar Airport. Now, now, because of the COVID, COVID pandemic, right, I'm stuck at home. Now, when I travel, I really want to go everywhere. So, my goal is actually to visit all the places on this map. Right. I have my bucket list. that, But then, like, I'm at the airport, right? I don't really know what's in Bali. My vision is only limited to the points that are directly connected to Denpasar Airport. So, my bucket list is still empty. And I keep track of the places that I visited. You know, like keeping collecting uh, fridge magnets or just like keeping a note. Okay, so uh, when I'm in Denpasar Airport, uh, I know that I can go to Bulut Bolong, Ubud, or Kuta, Kuta Beach. So I put that in my bucket list. As I'm done with Denpasar, I'm, I've crossed that uh, moves. I put that in my visited place. And then um, now I pick one item from my bucket list and I go to Kuta Beach over here. And at Kuta Beach, I know that I can go to Balangan Beach and Nusa Dua. 
So I put that in my bucket list as well. Now I'm done with Kuta Beach. I'm gonna uh, put that in my visited place and I'm gonna travel to Nusa Dua from my bucket list. And now from Nusa Dua, I know that I can go to Kuta and Balangan Beach, right? Those adjacent points. But then I know that Kuta and Balangan Beach are both are already in the visited list and bucket list. So I don't really need to actually, you know, uh, write them out again. I don't need to add them to my bucket list or visit it. So in this case, pay attention that if the I, the place that I that the places that I can visit or my neighbors are already in my bucket list of and visited, I don't really need to add them anymore. Same, uh, I'll go to but now I'm done with Nusa Dua. I put them in my visited. I go to Balangan, and at Balangan, my neighbors are Kuta and Nusa Dua in which I have visited them before, as I don't need to add them anymore. And now I'm done with the south part, southern part of Bali. Now I go to the northern part. No, northern part is Ubud. I go to Ubud and then like I can go to Pura Brantan and Mount Agung. And then uh, I cro I've, I'm done with Ubud, I put them in my visited list. I take one out from my bucket list and oh, it's Mount Agung. Mount Agung is very secluded on the eastern side of Bali, so I cannot go anywhere from there. I'm crossing that one out. Next, I'm going to pull out Pura, Pura Brantan. In where Pura Brantan, I can go to Punut Bolong, West Bali National Park, and Git Git. Uh, but then I have Punut Bolong already in my bucket list, so I don't need to double add it. Next is I have Lovina. Uh, Next, I go to Git Git. Uh, I go to Lovina. Lovina is at the end. Lovina is, I heard, is very beautiful. I heard you can see dolphins by sunrise. Then after Lovina, I'll go to the West Bali National Park. And lastly, I'll go to Punut Bolong. And last, and finally, I'm done with all my places. Okay, I'm done with all my places that I can visit. Now, the important question here is it, from Denpasar Airport, right? Can I visit Kuta? The answer is yes, because I visited it before. In fact, Kuta is adjacent to the Denpasar Airport. Can I visit the West Bali National Park? Yes, uh, I visited West Bali National Park after traveling a lot, after adding a lot of bucket lists. Uh, but the question is, can I visit Nusa Penida? You, you notice here that there's a point here at Nusa Penida that we haven't really visited. And the answer is no, we cannot visit Nusa Penida because it is not connected with the other parts. So the moral of the story here is that um, this is actually a lot like the maze, right? But then for the maze, right, this the, these questions are posed very early on where from point zero zero to point and MN, right? Is it connected? And basically to check whether it's connected or not is basically this method. Lah. You start at one point and then you add all the neighbors to its to your bucket list. And then like after you're done with that point, you've put that in your visitor, then you go to you take one place from your bucket list. And then you go to that one place, take all the neighbors and add it to your bucket list again. Uh, if the places has been visited, make sure that you don't add it, add them up again, because it's gonna be waste. It's gonna be redundant. Imagine if you can re-add the places that you have visited before back to your bucket list. It can just go non-stop. It can just go on revisiting it over and over again. Okay. So that's algorithm two lah. So um. Uh, we start with this, uh, May 0. If May 0 is 1, 1, meaning that if the starting point is blocked already, then we return false. Then now we start with a place, a visited place. So in this case, in the earlier case, it's the airport. And S is all the possible neighbors that we want to try, which is our bucket list. Lah. So now, uh, while our bucket list is not empty, this is why our bucket list is not empty, right? I take one item from the bucket list. I take one place from the bucket list. All right. Now I check in this case, right? This is a 
unique question. This is like, this one is a terminating condition. Lah. If the bucket, the item that I pull out from the bucket list, if the place that I want to visit, so this one is equal, like if say like, if I have a question earlier, like I want to go from Denpasa to the National Park. Basically, this is the same as like, if the position zero is equal to the National Park, then exit is reached, then return true. In this case, the exit is defined in this case, which is the last uh, coordinate. If exit is not reached, then I want to get all the possible neighbors, same as we did. From that point, we try to find all the connected uh, locations, right? And then basically, if the location right is not in visitor, or um, the location is in S, sorry, um, my lungs is a bit hurting. If the location is not in visited, then we simply add them up. Lah. As list of locations that has been visited. Okay. And we also append the neighbors that we want to try as well. Okay. After trying every possible move, at a certain point, right? At a certain point, uh, you should be able to reach this because remember our algorithm, right? We'll just search for everywhere, right? It will just like go, go through all the places. If it, if at a certain point, right? Uh, if you can see, the bucket list will be empty. The bucket list will be empty. So if the bucket list is empty, right, and we haven't reached our goal or our destination then we simply just return false. Because if we reach our destination, technically it should be catch, caught here. Okay, this is the way you actually debug it. So this is the sample run. Lah. So, um, you, okay, you start with zero, then you visit this part, current position is one one. And you generate a new list of possible neighbors, and then you as is two one. You go to two one. Your possible neighbors is one one two zero and two two. And you, you know, you get the point, lah. You basically just keep on traveling. Okay. So this is called the flooding algorithm. The idea is to expand the neighborhood and you don't repeat the neighbors that you visited. So, okay, this one, right, if you don't understand, it's okay, it's perfectly fine. Because this is what we call algorithms. So, in programming, right, I know like when we solve problems, there are, when we try to solve problems, uh, sometimes uh, it can take in many forms and ways. But there are just like some problems where the solution is kind of, you know, like you kind of know what the solution is. You can solve the solution by a pre-existing algorithm before. A pre-existing algorithm means like a lot of problems can be solved in this particular way. So, in this case, this is one of the algorithms that you learn today. This is a way where you meet a map, you just try to flood them up. Uh, if you see in earlier my sites, there are some keywords to this, which is breath first search and death first search. That those are also ways to actually go through a map or um, yeah go through a map. If you guys are very keen to learn about it, go Google it up. I know some of you are just so damn bored. Uh, try to learn about breakfast search and that first search. Okay. So I think there's a challenge. Uh, write a simple path to find a maze that is solvable. Okay, I think this is quite difficult. So, yeah, this is your challenge. If you can actually make this, then that would be wonderful. If you cannot, then I'm perfectly fine with it. And the bigger challenge is you find the shortest path. Okay, 
So you've learned a glimpse of algorithm today. Uh, we'll be uh, find we'll be talking more on algorithms in the coming weeks. I think we'll be talking about how uh, sorting algorithms because apparently rearranging numbers are not as easy as it seems. Some of you have tried with our assignment. You some of you already tried coming up with some sorting algorithms in assignment three. Uh, assignment four, I forgot. The one that, uh, you know, you need to get the top three numbers. You guys kind of work with that, sort a little bit of sorting there. So, I think we'll be talking about more about that in the coming future. But other than that, um, oh, okay. other than that, let's, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. Do you have, guys have any questions regarding the flooding algorithm for the last question? I think I have something regarding the optional one, uh, the shortest path, because I think one of my G mods got covered. Uh, I think, is it like the process like uh, you associate each item in the list with something called like a level or so. So the level is like the depth. Uh. So like if you pass through if you pass through the the thing in the list, then you can try to increase the depth of the like every time you go through one depth, then you increase the depth. Then by the time you go out of the maze or reach your target one, then you find the depth of that. Then that one will be the shortest path. Like the shortest distance. Mm. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, yeah, I think you can do that. That would be actually called a uh, breath first search. If it's called breath first search, lah, if you're honest. So yeah, you what you want to do is you just keep track lah, of the all possible paths. So I think what's different with this, right? Because path, right, is that uh, for path, right, you kind of need to keep track of the path as well. So you cannot just keep track of the places that you visit. So like you need to keep track of all possible paths. So like in this case, right, you start with this and then like you, you can have a path that goes this way and this way, then path that goes this way, this way, or this way. And you just keep track of all paths. Like, and for every path that doesn't work, you just need to remove it from the list of all possible paths. It's a bit more tricky, like, but uh, better you try it on your own time first. Then if you have any question, you can ask me via Telegram. Like. Or email. All right. Uh, if you have uh, no more questions, uh, feel free to leave the uh, tutorial. But if you have further questions, feel free to stay and ask, or you know, just chat. <laughs>